Here's your Saturday afternoon Hurricane Irma update. The storm has winds of 125 miles an hour. It's been moving right along the coast of Cuba since last night. That's why the winds are not as strong as they were yesterday. And the hurricane force winds still extend out about 70 miles from the eye of the storm. It's moving westward now at 9 miles an hour, but the motion is going to change. Now the tropical storm force winds are going out now to South Florida. So here are the steady winds. And still not a lot of data missing reports from the coast of Cuba because it was hit hard by a hurricane last night in Miami. Your winds steady over 20 Key West steady over 30, but you have wind gusts that are only going to get stronger as this system moves toward the north. Computer model projections, not a big change from the last couple of days, but it looks like the west coast of Florida is more likely to see the center of the storm, which is not to say the east coast won't get an impact. You are going to get an impact. And then as the storm weakens in the next several days, it goes through Georgia, northern Alabama, and into western Tennessee. Some, on, some of you online may notice other computer tracks like this. If you look closely, it says CLP5. It turns out that that's actually not a forecast. That is an average. We call it climatology. So in other words, something like this says, in September, this time of the year, where would the average hurricane go that's sitting where that one's sitting? So this is not a forecast, that is just an average. And a lot of times you see things online that are not fully what they seem to be, not because someone's trying to fool you, it's just because it's not what you expect it to be. Here's the forecast cone. 140 mile an hour winds likely tomorrow morning. Now keep in mind, the forecast track is a little easier to get, even though you can't be perfect with it. But those winds, it could be 150, it could be 130, and it could be even a little bit higher or lower than those. But the Florida Keys look like they will get a direct eye wall passing over from Hurricane Irma in the morning before the sun comes up. Now these are central time zone numbers. Nonetheless, Fort Myers and then Sarasota still during the day tomorrow winds easily 140 miles an hour for the west coast and central Florida continuing northward across Tampa by Monday morning winds about 115. So again projected wind speed but you have to say plus or minus 20 sometimes even 30 miles an hour in the worst case because you can't be certain. If the storm stays out over the Gulf of Mexico, it may stay stronger longer. If it travels a little more to the east in this cone, the winds could diminish faster. So there are still pluses and minuses and still mystery. From Monday to Tuesday, look at the big change in projected wind speed. 115 miles an hour Monday morning by Tuesday morning, about 30 miles an hour. So well below tropical storm force once it moves through Georgia into northern Alabama, Tennessee, Southern Illinois, this is what hurricanes do. They are a natural part of the earth trying to move moisture, trying to move heat, and trying to balance it all out. The problem is we are all in front of it. That's why you get these hurricane warnings. Basically for the entire Florida Peninsula and the Bahamas, those locations will feel hurricane force winds, winds over 75 miles an hour. There's also a storm surge warning, and this is the other part of the storm you may not focus on. Regardless of where it goes, whether it's right on the west coast, central Florida, or even east coast, the winds are going to be blowing toward the land ahead of it. They'll be blowing to the east. Uh, behind it, they'll be blowing to the west. That pushes water against the coast onshore and creates storm surge. And then you have to add in the rain. The rain falls, and if it's too much at once, you get flooding. So there's a flash flood watch for most of central Florida. These other counties may be added later. It all depends on where the rain bands will set up. And now for South Florida, you have a tornado watch. This is what hurricanes do. And part of the reason why you have the tornado watch already, even though the hurricane is well to your south, you have these feeder bands, the bands of rain and thunderstorms that move on shore. And when they do, they can create quick spin ups and, of course, isolated tornadoes ahead of the storm, during the storm, and with the storm. So, on the latest radar, radar is located in Key West, so it doesn't show the full storm on the other side. It can't see that far out, but it's very clear to see the eye moving right along the coast of Cuba, wobbling a little bit back and forth. It is going to make that turn. A lot of people uh, can't see how that's possible. I'll show you in a little bit. But in this forecast model, sometime tonight, tomorrow, it begins to make the turn. There is no clock time. You can expect it to happen. To your eye, you won't notice it, but gradually it will happen. This is Sunday morning, 7.30 a.m., Florida Keys. Look at the wind circulation counterclockwise. So again, the east coast of Florida, all during the day Sunday, gets that wind blowing onshore. The feeder bands coming in from the Atlantic Ocean. The west coast of Florida, to start off with, you have an offshore wind, which is good ahead of the storm. 
But in the forecast, as you look at the, this one computer model taking it toward Tampa, taking it toward Sarasota, in the late day on Sunday, the west coast of Florida starts to get that south wind. So that's going to push water onshore. Feeder bands, they will circulate, go into the storm. And again, that eye wall, even though the computer projects it here, it could easily be over here. So don't let your guard down if you're on the east coast of Florida. It continues to move northward on Monday into Georgia and then slowly weakening. The more land it's over, the less water source it has to keep it running as a hurricane. And that's why the wind should diminish. Now for my area, the News 5 area of Mobile, uh, northeast wind for tomorrow, breezy in the panhandle. It'll be 25 to 35 miles an hour. On Monday, likely the same story, and then picking up some rain, but not too extreme. Most of it should bypass the Mobile, Pensacola area. What about Jose? Well, here's good news. Finally, two bits of good news. Katia is done. Hurricane Jose is passing just north of those islands of the Caribbean. So this is a really good thing because that's a category four. It's powerful heading to the northwest. It'll linger in the open Atlantic for a few days. So finally, the last thing to leave you with, why is this going to turn? Well, these clouds are in a region of low pressure. Ahead of it, high pressure. Behind it, high pressure. Low pressure likes to follow low pressure. But if you actually look at the winds, you'll note the winds coming out of the northwest across the southeastern US. So basically, it's going to hit wind that will eventually slow it and then turn it for a while, it'll follow that trough of low pressure, but all of that's also going to shift in the next couple of days. So again, it's going to turn. I can't tell you exactly what time, how fast, how strong it will be when it happens, but that's what the scenario is uh, going to be with Hurricane Irma. And then Jose, again, no issue for any islands in the near term. That's your update wherever you are. Keep up with your local forecast, your local National Weather Service, your local broadcasters, whoever you trust, and most importantly, have a plan and stay safe. I'm Chief Meteorologist Alan Seals.